Okay, our final chapter that we're going to have uh, included in this class is chapter 14, Financial Statement Analysis. Again, this is going to be a, a bit of a review. You actually had this chapter associated with the last chapter in your previous financial accounting. So hopefully this will be a little easier the second time around. Okay, so there are common methods of analysis. Uh, the textbook refers to the horizontal analysis, and it provides a year-to-year -year comparison of a company's performance in different periods. So if you can imagine plotted, uh, like let's say sales, sales across, and then you have one year, let's say 2020, 2019, 2018, and what you're doing is you're analyzing sales horizontally, seeing how they change from year to year. Vertical analysis is a means of evaluating the relative size of each line item in the financial statements. Also helpful, helpful to comparing companies of different sizes. So in vertical analysis, you may have sales at the very top and net income at the very bottom. Now what we're going to do is compare net income to sales. So now this is a ratio or vertical analysis. Now we're actually comparing different line items on the financial statements to one another. And then ratio analysis provides a means of evaluating the relationship between key components of the financial statements. Once we go to, to ratio analysis, now we, we may be looking at something on an income statement and seeing its relative size to something that's on the balance sheet. Next slide shows the Supermart income statement. You can study that a bit. The bottom line is 48,000 net income in 2017, and then in 16, it's 26,000. The balance sheet, you can see the balance sheet set up, two years, 17 and 16. Okay, so let's focus on horizontal analysis. And horizontal analysis is the study of percentage changes in comparison statements. There's a, a two-step process. The first step is compute the dollar amount of change from the earlier period to the later period. And then step two is divide the dollar amount of change by the earlier period, the base amount. So as an example here, let's say uh, if we go, we'll go to the financial statements specifically 858, I think that's sales on the income statement. Yeah, sales, sales revenue. See that in 2017 and in 16. So the first thing we want to do, because it's horizontal analysis, we're going across, we're comparing 803 to 858. Now, uh, you hear this all the time in your past, you've heard sales are up by 25% or sales are down by 10% or employment's up or down. How do they do that computation? So this is a, a very, this is a basic business math computation. What you're first going to do is find the difference between these two. You started off with 803, that is going to be your base, and you ended up with 858, 858. So let's take the difference. And if it's positive, we're going to subtract the 17 from the 16, the base, if it's positive, then it went up, right? So let's go ahead and look at the computation. 858 minus 803,000 is 55,000. And because 17 is larger than 16, you had an increase. Now the next step, step two is divide the dollar amount of change, that 55,000, divided by the base period amount. The base period is always where you started. Where did you start? You started in 2016. You went from 16 to 17. The first year is always the base year. So the 55,000 is gonna be divided by the base year of 803,000. This is where you started, so that's what you're comparing. 55,000 divided by 803,000 is 0 0.068 rounded or 6.8%. In this case, we could say that sales are up by 6.8%. Okay, so 
we did that with sales and here's the line item sales revenue the change in dollar amount and the percentage increase but guess what we can line up the sales the income statement we can line up the income statement and we can do the same thing for every line item horizontally so it appears uh, the net change between 17 and 16 is for cost of goods sold is 4,000 positive it's up and that computes to be 0.8% difference. Now, the way we do that is take the 4,000 and divide it by 509,000. Follow the patterns, keep going down, it'll be perfect. Now, it's easy to see how that could be helpful for the income statement, but it also can be helpful for analyzing the balance sheet. And we're gonna do the same exact thing. Let's take accounts, let's take inventory. We started off with 111,000 in 2016, and we ended up with 113 in 2017. The difference between the two, 113 minus 111 is two, two thousand dollars. Now we're going to take the 2,000 and we're going to divide it by the base year 2016, and you're going to come up with 1.8 percent. 2,000 divided by 111,000 is gonna give you 1.8%. Now let's look at accrued liabilities. In this case, 31,000 was your base year. It actually went down. So you're, that's gonna be represented by a negative $4,000 in brackets. So this was a decrease of 4,000. So negative 4,000 divided by the base year of 31,000 results in negative 12.9%, okay? Follow the same patterns all the way through and you should have all of the horizontal analysis of the balance sheet complete. Now the next item discussed is called trend percentages. And as the textbook suggests, this is a form of horizontal analysis. It indicates the direction a business is taking over a longer period of time. So the steps, we're gonna select a base year. Usually the base year is gonna be the first year and we're gonna look at a number of years at the same time. We're gonna set the base year to be 100% and then we're each following year is expressed as a percentage of the base amount. The trend percentage is any year dollar amount divided by the base year dollar amount. So, Let's take a look at trend percentage example. Assume Supermart selected 2012 as the base year. So you can see on this spreadsheet here, they're going to plot sales revenue for 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. 2012 is the base year. They, put, they plug in the numbers. So these are numbers that will be given to you. These are the lookup numbers that a, an account will go and check and see what were the sales for 12, what were the sales for 13, all the way down. The base year, usually the first year, is going to be 100%. Bingo, we're done, right? No, nope. now we're going to go to each year after that, and we're going to take the dollar amount for that one year, like, it, for example, 2013 had 618000 and we're gonna divide it by the base year. 618,000 divided by 600,000 will give you 1.03. 1.03 in terms of a percentage is 103%. 648,000 divided by the base year of 600,000 will give you 1.08 or 108%. You can go down to each year and confirm that that percentage is what your computations show. Now from the percentages or actually from the dollar amount, the sales revenue, we'll plot the sales revenue on the uh, vertical uh, axis or let's see that's X, that's going to be the Y. We'll go ahead and put the dollar amount on the Y axis we'll put time or years on the x-axis 
2012, 13, 14, 15, and then we'll plot each sale. So the base year, 2012, 600,000, 2012, that makes it easy. It's right at 600,000. We'll just start it right there. 2013, 618,000. We're going to have to eyeball this, but 2013, it's going to be up, but not significantly, but you can kind of judge where 18, 618,000, 620 is probably somewhere about right here. So that's where we're at. And you keep plotting, but we'll do one more. 14 is 648,000. 14, 640, that's pretty close to the midpoint. So we're right about there. And then after you've plotted with a point, every, every uh, position on the graph relative to the year, then we'll just draw a line. We'll draw a line here, we'll draw a line there. Draw a line from here to there, and then here. And then you have your graph. 